Today on the Design Podcast, we talk about all things wayfinding, map design, and more. We have with us a guest. Hi, I'm Mandar Rani. I'm an assistant professor of visual communication at the Industrial Design Center, IIT Bombay. And he is here to take us through the journey of campus map redesign project he recently mentored. Thanks, Aditi, for inviting me. IIT Bombay already had a campus map, right? So why did you redesign it? Couple of reasons, actually. We are currently looking at the earlier version of the map. Do you find any issues? The campus looks like an island somehow. Yeah. We have a lake on the left hand side of the campus, but we are not surrounded by water on all the sides. One more issue. Could you tell me what is 42? 42 is the main gate? 42 is actually the state bank of India. Main gate appears to be 42 due to its proximity with the number. How long did it take for you guys to redesign this map? We have been designing this map for last two months. Two months for a campus map? You think designing a map is easy? We are talking about 500 plus acres on a map that is handy. Okay, a quick exercise. Try to find the solar lab. Alright, hostels, chemical, crescent, Devi temple. Here, 61 is solar lab. Yeah, you got it right. See, to locate your place in the current map, you had to scan the entire legend. This is time consuming. You located 61 in the legend. Now look it up on the map. Alright. 63, 54, 60. Got it. Here's 61. Which means every time I have to look up a place, I'll have to search twice. Once in the legend and once on the map. That is double the time for anything. Yes. And our aim is to reduce this time. What about your process? It's an iterative process. Iterative meaning? Iterative meaning we came up with versions, building the map incrementally by gaining insights at every stage. Here's the first one. Why is the campus painted black? We were debating on the same topic. The black makes the whole mass stand out. It creates a high contrast. Contrast is necessary to separate the campus from its surroundings. But here the contrast is too high and it can be reduced. I'll tell you what do I mean by subtle and stark contrast. You see, the landmass of the campus does not stand out like an individual shape. We change the color. Color made a lot of difference. Right, this was coming out like a shape in itself, but here it is getting subdued. And now you can see other things like roads and numbers. Yeah, you will notice the roads and numbers in the foreground. The landmass is now in the background. So this is the difference between subtle and stark contrast. It helps you highlight certain things. It creates an information hierarchy. Do you notice any other change in the map? The groups. Yeah, earlier it was just a long list. Remember, here to find the solar lab, you had to scan the whole list. So if we group things that are similar under one head, they are easier to find. That's a drastic change. You have trees and waves. We had used solid flat colors in the legend as a color code. At times, these were confused with other shades of green and blue. To prevent such confusions, we added textures. I am surprised the roads are straight now. Earlier version borrowed its roads as they were from a satellite image. But imagine, if you ask people on the campus how to go to Hostel 13 from the main gate, they would say keep walking straight. See a person walking or driving down this road will always perceive this road to be straight despite the curves you see in the satellite picture. This is where we use abstraction in the map. Abstraction? But how can you just remove those curves? Was that done to remove confusion? It is not to remove confusion really. It just reduces the cognitive load, makes the map simpler. Cognitive what? Okay, let me explain. Whenever you search for something, you process information. Reducing cognitive load is reducing the amount of information to be processed. So we do away with the curves. That means your map does not mimic the reality anymore. That's right. Our map is diagrammatic. You see the roads are straightened. They are abstracted. So it is simpler to scan and easier to understand. We are trying to bring the diagrammatic representation of the map as close as possible to how people perceive in their real life. But won't that skew the distances? Our map is not to scale. The distances skew a bit. So we have to be extra careful. 
I notice that the number of groups has increased now. Why is that? Yes, there is a reason for it. In what group would you put say a temple? We created a group called others and placed the temple there, but we had a problem. Another example, where would a garden lie? Every campus is home to such unique places. Are you going to make groups for each one of these? And how is my user supposed to guess this? What we have placed under what group? Certain things like banks for example cannot be put under others because they are important. That is why we made four new groups: banks, schools, auditorium, and extracurricular activities. Even now there are places like temple, market, medical shop, hospital which have no other group to go into and remain in others. Even if the number of groups have increased, I still think there is a lot of chaos on the map. What do you mean by chaos? More group mean more color codes and under each group the numbering starts from 1. We were struggling with this for a while and with the increase in number of groups we ran out of colors that could be easily differentiated by the human eye. It was not under our control to manage the repetition of numbers either. We addressed this issue by removing the groups and arranging all the places alphabetically. So that each place has a unique number. Yeah. Each place was assigned a unique code number and we added a grid on the map so the search area reduces. Reduce search area? What do you mean? Can you look up civil engineering in the legend? Civil is C411. C4 is the grid code. Now look up C4 on the map. C and 4 11. Got the number? You see, you looked up civil engineering only in the small area that is C4 and not the entire map. That is what I meant by reduce scan area. And the best part is in this new iteration we have increased the real estate allotted to IIT campus by reducing the area given to Pawai Lake. We actually squeezed the Pawai Lake. Indeed. Pawai Lake was as big or probably bigger than the campus itself. This is pretty smart. We are cheating a bit. This has allowed us to further detail out the campus. You brought back the groups in this version. At this stage of redesign, we are still confused whether we should show places in the legend sorted alphabetically or have them arranged in groups, and each stage has its own advantage. The advantage of having groups is suppose you are new to IIT campus and if you are searching for say a lab, you have forgotten its name. Meaning I know I'm looking for a lab, but I don't recollect which one in particular. Yeah. Right, a rare event, but it happens. In that case, having the entire list under the group of laboratories helps. Suppose I had not made groups but arranged the names alphabetically, which was the case earlier. You would have read through the entire list to search your lab. That is true, the labs are all scattered. So groups basically act like memory triggers. No. Groups just segregate information and reduce my search area in the legend. Right, but why have an alphabetical list? Most people would know the name of the place they are looking for. In that case, alphabetical would work the best. But alphabetical list has its disadvantages. For example, if you are a first time visitor and you are looking for a restaurant, you may not know its name. There is a restaurant in IIT called Gulmohar. How a new person can guess this? Here, having a group called restaurant helps. But you could always list the restaurant both under R for restaurant and G for Gulmohar. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Repetition of names would mean longer list and more area on the map. But we are trying to make this map handy, and there is a premium on space. Hence, we felt the dual strategy was better and decided to keep both the list alphabetical as well as groups. Not only that, we arranged the items. and each group alphabetically for a better search right a for aerospace followed by c followed by e would our map work in black and white was one more question people won't have color printers then would our color coding work that is the reason we decided to do away with the color coding we have thought of each and every scenario in terms of the audience in the campus now it is up to people to use this map and figure out whether we have missed out on anything Some interesting things that I've noticed. Initially roads that were straight had flat colors. In the latest version, you have added a shadow. Clearly, it's made a lot of difference. The road system seems to have popped out with much more clarity. If you look at the map as an information layering exercise, roads become an important layer of information for the map user. By adding a shadow, we could pull out the roads.
Right, and here we come to the end of the show. So next time you head to IIT campus, do grab this map and find your way around. And let me thank Professor Mandar Rani for being on the show with us. Thanks. So audience, keep coming back for more. More later at mrani.com. Thank you.